Today we're going to talk about seven of the most common questions that are asked when getting started with sweet potatoes. Guten yardening everybody! Sweet potatoes are one of our favorite plants to grow. In fact, if you're new to our channel, you should go back and check out some of our harvests from a few months ago, and you'll see that we grow quite a few sweet potatoes and quite a few varieties of sweet potatoes. And if you're returning, well, you know just how important this crop is to us. Not only are they an incredibly nutritious addition to the food that we're growing 365 days a year, but the taste, the taste of these is absolutely outstanding. In this video, we want to address some of the questions that we had as we started working with sweet potatoes that we think will be beneficial to you, regardless of how much you've grown or how little you've grown in the past. And I think some of these answers are gonna help you make some of the more important decisions when it comes to getting started this season. Question number one, what's the difference between a bush variety sweet potato and a vining variety sweet potato? Now you may not have even known that there was a difference, but there certainly is. On the table in front of me, I have seven different varieties of sweet potatoes, four of which are vining variety sweet potatoes, and three are bush variety. Bush variety sweet potatoes do not take up nearly the space that their vining counterparts do. In fact, most of these varieties are going to take up about three by three feet, so nine square feet which means that these will actually work well to be grown in containers. These three varieties of bush sweet potatoes are found pretty commonly here in the United States. We have our Beauregard sweet potato, our Bunch Puerto Rico sweet potato, and we have our Georgia Jet sweet potato. Now, again, these are bush varieties. And you can see this one's a little bit smaller. Our Bunch Puerto Rico did not grow as large this year, but we've also eaten some of the larger ones. But these three varieties, as you can see, are also a little bit smaller in general than our vining varieties. Although our Georgia Jet really did well this year. Our vining varieties, and you can see this pretty clearly, we have our Purple Passion, our Hannah, our Japanese red, and our Vardaman sweet potatoes. These are all vining varieties. They can expand upwards of 13 to 15 feet of vining. Now, in addition to the difference between vine size or footprint for these different types of sweet potatoes, there are a couple of other pretty important differences that you should know. For one, the vining type grows differently. As the vines expand out, and if they're allowed to touch the ground, they will take root again, which means that you could essentially, if you have a long enough growing season, a long enough time where there's warm soil and warm weather, you could eventually grow far more and have a much bigger harvest from the vining variety than you would from the bush variety. The bush variety developed directly underneath the slip, and that's what you're going to get out of them. For both of these varieties, as the greens start to develop, you can do cuttings and propagate more slips from them. But it is important to remember that sweet potatoes love that nice warm weather. So whatever you're going to do, you want to make sure that you have the season and the length of a season to do that in. So if you live in a planting zone that has cooler weather or a shorter growing season, you're probably not going to see as much difference between the bush variety and the vine variety. And the other piece, and I alluded to this earlier, you might want to plant this bush variety if what you have space for is more of a container type planting. And they definitely grow well in containers. The other thing that you want to keep in mind with sweet potatoes is typically the longer you can keep them in the ground at that nice warmer temperature, the better off you're going to be, especially when it comes to these vining varieties. So again, if you can keep these in the ground for as long as possible, even if it says 80 to 90 days for some of these bush varieties, if you can keep them in there that 110 to 120 days, you're going to likely see a bigger crop, better production, bigger sized roots. Question number two, should I buy slips or propagate my own? If you had to guess, which ones of these sweet potatoes do you think we propagated and grew then from our own slips? And which ones do you think we purchased? 
In our local area, we found two organic varieties of sweet potato. They were the Hanna and the Japanese red sweet potatoes. Now, the Hanna and the Japanese red are great producers. They were fantastic producers for us this year. This is one of the few Japanese red that we have left. We did grow some that were a good bit bigger than this, but our Hanna variety, well, you can see we had some monsters from there. And from just a few sweet potatoes that we purchased, a few of those organic sweet potatoes, we grew a whole bunch of both of these varieties. These other varieties are from slips that we purchased. And the nice thing is that we only have to purchase them once as long as we save a few of these sweet potatoes because as you can see from our Beauregard here, we've already got the beginnings of some development of slips and there are quite a few eyes on this sweet potato. So we're gonna get some amazing slips out of these sweet potatoes. So the answer to the question of should I buy slips online or buy slips from an online store or should I propagate my own comes down to time, making sure that you get started early enough like we have already with some of our sweet potatoes so that they're ready to go out as the temperature warms up and it comes down to what you want to spend and whether or not you want a larger variety that may be accessible at your local stores. One of the reasons why we spent some money to buy some online last year is because we really wanted to try out some of these, like this beautiful purple passion sweet potato, which is also, as you can see, starting to shoot out some of these leaves. And we wanted to try a wider variety. And we knew that once we had grown our own and harvested our own, we should be able to develop slips from them. So it's a process then that expands our selection, our variety, and also enables us to see which ones grow best in our soil. Because not everyone's going to get the same results from the sweet potatoes that you plant. And that leads us to question number three, which is when should I start propagating sweet potato slips? And the answer to that depends in part on the growing zone where you live. So if you live in a warmer zone, the timeline might be different from ours. We're here in zone five, Wisconsin, and we know that our cold weather is going to last for another couple of months. But we know that sweet potato slips tend to take about six to eight weeks to grow to maturity. This sweet potato has been in this water and started developing slips for about two and a half weeks. And you can see how well they're developing. You can see they're developing all over. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got six different eyes that are producing right now. And the slips aren't quite long enough for us to start harvesting. We're gonna let these develop for another couple of weeks. And then you can compare it to this purple passion sweet potato that we have here. And the slip on the top here is about 10 inches long. So this is where we could go down right below one of the nodes here, and you can see where the roots are about to pop out if we let it just touch water, and we could clip it off right here. We can actually place it in the same water where the rest is growing. You can see how quickly these roots develop, and I don't wanna mess with them too much, but as I pull this out here, you can see just how long the roots begin to develop. So here on the bottom, we've got roots, and on the top, gently place it back in here. On the top, we've got these slips, these beautiful slips that are propagating. If you look at our earlier video on tips to increase the number of slips that you're propagating from single sweet potatoes, you'll see that we don't just propagate our sweet potatoes in water. This is definitely a great way to do it. We also propagate our slips in a type of soilless potting mix. And so you can see that from our earlier video that it produces just as well. In fact, there's one right behind me here that's still developing nicely. But I'm gonna repeat what I said and I'm gonna make it very clear. You need to give yourself about six to eight weeks for these slips to develop from our sweet potatoes. Then we're gonna cut them off and we like to place ours in water. And once we place it in water, you can see within a few days, we have roots developing right here at the nodes. And a few days after that, and really this is a matter of just a few days, the roots are really shooting out. Now we have a few experiments planned for these slips to see if we can improve the size of what we're harvesting even more. We're gonna save that for a later video. 
So for many of you, now is a great time to be starting your sweet potato slips if you haven't done so already. I know that some of you have probably started within the last couple of weeks, but know your grow zone, look at that last frost date, work backwards, give yourself that six to eight weeks to make sure these are ready to go in the ground as soon as that soil gets nice and warm. Question number four, if I'm propagating my own sweet potatoes, does the size of the sweet potato matter all that much? One of our harvest experiments this year ended up looking more like a bunch of sweet potato fries because we only had about 80 days from planting until we harvested. They didn't get all that big. And if we tried to grow our sweet potato slips or tried to propagate our sweet potato slips from those smaller ones, I don't think they'd be able to handle the kind of slips that we're looking for. We want nice sturdy slips. And if you have a tiny little sweet potato, you have less potential for that type of development. So if you have larger sweet potatoes like this Hannah sweet potato, you're gonna find it's gonna have a much easier time as it develops those slips. And that leads me to our next question. Question number five, which end goes down whenever I'm trying to propagate my slips in water? Well, typically for these sweet potatoes, you will have a pointier end. You'll have an end that's a little bit rounder, a little bit wider, and a pointier end. The pointier end is where the roots develop, the rounder end is where the slips come from. And you can see what I'm talking about. You have the pointier end and a bit of a rounder end up here. And if you let them go long enough, if you have them in storage long enough, you might see the beginnings of the slips and that will remove all doubt for you. Question number six, how do I propagate my own slips in water? Well, I've already shown you a couple of them here today, but I haven't shown you how we do it. Fortunately, it's really simple and it does not, I repeat, it does not require any cutting of your potato whatsoever. You need to pick a spot, and we typically pick a spot that enables about a third of our sweet potato to go into the water and we're gonna place our toothpicks into the sides of this sweet potato. And we're placing this into a jar or into a cup and I'm gonna add a fourth one here to give it plenty of support. So these toothpicks will hold it up. And what we have here is pointy end down. We've got some room temperature water, nothing cold, nothing hot. Room temperature water, we didn't cut the sweet potato at all. We've got our top up here. I can already see some of the eyes. I can see where some of these slips are gonna come out. And this is going to sit just like this. And we expect in six to eight weeks to have plenty of slips. And you'll see them much sooner than that. But this simple process, again, nice container. Like we usually use jars, but we have these inexpensive plastic cups, BPA-free plastic cups, and there they grow. Question number seven, how many sweet potato slips do I need for my family? You can expect each slip to develop into a plant that grows at least a pound of sweet potatoes. And if the soil conditions are right, and we had really nice soil conditions this year, you could see triple that pretty easily. So two to three pounds of sweet potatoes per slip. This year we planted enough slips to grow 200 pounds of sweet potatoes for our family and we still have sweet potatoes remaining. So if sweet potatoes are something that you really enjoy, you can think about that as a basic rule of thumb. Look for one to three pounds of sweet potatoes per slip and then measure that out based on how much your family enjoys, how much they want to eat. You know, they say variety is the spice of life, and that cliche holds true for sweet potatoes. We grew a bunch of different varieties this year. I promise you, they all have very different tastes, very different flavors. They're fun to experiment with. They make an incredible addition to your garden. As we get closer to setting these outdoors, we will follow up with more answers for you. But if you have any questions for us, go ahead and leave us a comment and let us know. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give us a like. Remember to share and subscribe. And most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.